Hi, I'm going to talk to you today about how to answer this question from the uh, GCSE Science Double Award Sample Assessment Materials. Uh, this is from the Physics Unit 2, or Unit 6 if it's Double Award. And it's a question all about forces and uh, the way that objects behave when they are um, subjected to unbalanced or balanced forces. And um, it is a sample assessment material, so uh, some of the questions are um, not as well refined as you would find in a real exam paper. Uh, but there's still some important lessons about how to answer exam questions that we can learn from in here. So this particular question has given us some information up here. Now, uh, ideally, the exam board would like us to read through this. And, and we're hoping that the answers, uh, these answers down here are somewhere in the text. So um, we, we can at least uh, get a bit of a head start on our understanding of, of what the question wants us to do. So um, take your time, read your way through that, and then we'll have a look at these, these statements and see what we're going to get. So it's really important that you actually read the statements and you think about them. Now, the first one contains um, a contradiction. So the weight of a body is measured in kilograms. Well, weight is a force, so that will be measured in newtons. So I know straight away that that one is not correct. The mass of a body is much lower on the moon. Well, I know that the mass is the amount of um, material in something. So if I was on the moon or on Earth, it doesn't matter where I am, the, the amount of me is still the same. So I'm going to cross through that one. The inertia of a body does not change on different planets. Well, inertia is a, is a, a different way of thinking about mass. So does not change on different planets. I, I think that one sounds correct to me. And because it's out of two marks, uh, I'm expecting there to be two, uh, two um, answers that are correct here. And this one, the gravitational force on, on a two kilogram body on the moon is 3.2 newtons. Well, I think that one is correct because up here it says that the gravitational field strength on the moon is 1.6. So if I do uh, W weight is equal to mass times gravity, uh, well, that's going to be um, 2 times 1.6 which is equal to, for those of you who, who love your mental maths, 3.2. So that one down there looks correct as well. Then we move on, and we have a force diagram here. So it's uh, they've been dropping a cupcake. You might have had a go at doing this uh, in class yourself. And this cupcake case is falling downwards. It's moving through the air already. There's a, a downward force of 0 0.2, and there's an upward force of 0 0.04. Be careful. And the, the first question is asking me nice and simply, what's the upward force? Well, I know that this one down here is weight, because weight always acts down. And I know that it's falling through the air. So in order to fall through the air, we have to move air particles out of the way. So we're going to encounter some air resistance. So that one down there is air resistance. Okay, then we need to flip over for the rest of the question. Calculate the resultant force that is acting on the cupcake case. Okay. So resultant force is how much force there is overall. So when you've added together and then taken away uh, all of the different forces, when you consider which directions they're acting in. So I've got a downward force of 0 0.2 and an opposite 0 0.04. So I'm just going to write down what I've got. So I've got 0.2. And I've got a minus, because it's acting upwards, I've got an upwards 0.04. And if I do that sum, I get 0.16 newtons. Okay. Now, this confuses a lot of students, because there's an equation for resultant force on page 2, and it says resultant force is mass times acceleration. But I've not been given an acceleration in this question, so I can't go about solving it that way. Interestingly though, Newton's second law has been rearranged for us down here. So that's acceleration is resultant force divided by mass. So I need to use some of my answers to, to now calculate what the acceleration of this object will be. So acceleration A equals resultant force is coming from up here in the question. And mass. Now I don't know that, so I'm going to have to go and have a look. And it's in here in the question stem. Okay, so 0 0.02 kilograms. Okay, and then those of you again who love your maths will be able to work that through as 8 meters per second. Don't forget the unit is meters per second squared. On the end. Okay, they give us it in the question actually. Describe and explain how the acceleration of the cupcake case changes. <clears throat> 
Well, if it's accelerating, then the speed will increase. But as the speed increases, so does the air resistance until the force is balance at terminal velocity. Okay, so what we're saying is that this cupcake case is going to increase, uh, its speed is going to increase, but as its speed goes up, its air resistance will go up, and as its air resistance goes up, the forces will start to balance out, and we'll reach something called terminal velocity. And then lastly, it wants me to state the value of the upward force when the cupcake case travels at terminal velocity. There we go, there's that key word again. So the downward force is 0.2, and it's never going to get any bigger than that. So when the forces are balanced, this upward force here must also be 0.2. Not a nice, simple way to finish off that question. I hope that's been helpful, and I'll see you again soon.